This meeting is being recorded. Okay, so a very good evening to all of you, my dear friends. Today we have uh, Mr. Puneet with us. He is a very qualified person and he has done his master's from one of the reputed institutes of India, right? That is MDI Gurgaon. and he hails from Jhajjar, Haryana, right? So a very congratulations, Puneet, from my side for your success in NABAD grade A 2021. Thank you, thank you so much. And uh, I, I, like I said, I mean, I overlooked to you because of the help you kind of granted me throughout. It's just been really encouraging one and knowledgeable too with, with the kind of experience you had. I could borrow a lot and that has helped me a lot. Okay, Puneet. So, friends, Puneet is actually a very qualified person. He has worked in India also. He has worked in abroad also. And more important to that is a quite humble person and ground-to-earth person. That is more important. So, Puneet, uh, th was this your first attempt in Nabad? Uh, not really. I guess it was the third one. Uh, first, I could not clear the prelims. And that was the same year I cleared the UPSC prelims. So, mm -hmm. I went with that all uh, like I've done UPSC, maybe I'll try my hand set in a part and I'll clear that too. But uh, I failed miserably, I would say that. I mean, mm -hmm. went without any specific preparation for the exam. Uh, the next two attempts, uh, last year itself, I mean, I appeared for the interview as well. And this is my second interview. So three years, once I could not clear the prelims, uh, next two attempts, uh, I cleared the main session. Mm -hmm. uh, the last attempt interview was well, but again, could not make it to the finalist. And this time... Uh, I'm through. So that, that's how it's been. Good. So put it, uh, this can be an inspirational story for many of the people who are preparing for such organization where we have very less number of vacancies every year and number of part participants are appearing for this examination. So what message would you like to give to the youngsters who will be appearing for 2022 or who are out of the list in 2021? How they should keep themselves motivated for the overall process of this examination? I think, yeah, I mean, the number of seats uh, that that uh, that are available to grab, if you, if you look at the general category, and this is where it's most competitive, I would say. There, there are 20, there were 25, 26 last year, and there are around 30 this year. So I think the first thing, uh, we should not be overwhelmed by the by the vacancies that are available. Uh, I think it's easy to say that if, even if there is one, it's always for grab. Uh, but I think it's easier said than done. But first thing is that you need to rule out that, uh, that, that that thing from your mind that there are only 31 seats, there are X number of participants who are uh, appearing for prelims. And th this this is one of those exams where you know, these 60, 70,000 people who appear for all the exams. So it's, I mean, this is a common pool of people. So you, you mm -hmm. might be competing with them here, then you might be competing with them in any other exam. Of course, uh, of the same stage with same number of vacancies. So it, it might become overwhelming at times, but I would say, I mean, just, just keep it out of your mind. I mean, don't let it get too much into your mind frame that there are only 26 or 36 to grab. Even if there is one, you can always make it. It's tough, but you can always make it. So first right. thing, I mean, you rule that out. Second, uh, whenever you clear any stage, I think that gives you a fair bit of confidence. Even if you clear prelims for once, uh, you will realize that I'm, say, I'm, I'm at the 97th, 97th, or maybe 96th percentile. Then you clear mains, then you realize, oh, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. at 98th, 99th, right? If you are interview, uh, I think uh, then it's a mark or two here and there. Last year, I missed it by two marks. Right. And I exactly knew where the mistake was. So when something is so close and uh, you reach so close to it, I think uh, first thing you should not be overwhelmed. Uh, don't get it on your mind. And I think you should be fine. Then there should be an end goal and the end goal is the organization itself. I think that's something that uh, keeps me excited all the time, the kind of work that NAPA do on the ground. And if you could relate to it, the, the end goal is really beautiful. And uh, if you take it in right state, the entire journey becomes much more rewarding. I think that that's right. that's uh, two three cents of mine that you should approach this exam. Uh, that that is my what next question is to you, Puneet. That you have done your HR from MDI Gurga, and you have been uh, working for different reputed multinationals with a six-figure salary. Then what motivated you to join Nawad? Any specific intent from your inside that I should go for rural development or something? What? sparks you for this organization so if i if i leave my you know hr background and, and the 
pool of people I was around while I was in MBI or uh, while I was in corporate. I think that that's that's a very uh, what do you say? I mean, it's ivory tar kind of a culture around you that uh, you 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 working for reputed agencies, and then there are people of same mind, right? I mean, they they think alike. But if I go back to my engineering, I think uh, that that's that's the most diverse pool of uh, people I've met, and people from my engineering graduate um, who graduated with me, they are into diverse fields. Mm-hmm. So while I was in engineering itself, we started a very small NGO, not an NGO, I mean not not a formal NGO you can call it, but something you know where uh, people of our thought process, we thought like, let's let's work at the ground level and see what the challenges farmers are facing or. Uh, what the challenges people in rural areas are facing, and then that subject it brings you close to the end objective. So mm-hmm. that 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 was one area where I met a lot of diverse people, and they are still working in those areas. So I have friends across. I mean, across the political spectrum, across the thought process, there are people who will lead the farmer protest, and then there are people who are good economists who will say maybe this is not the right thing to do, uh, protest in law. Or maybe there is a good sense of economics behind whatever the laws were. And when you listen to all these thought process, I think you make one for yourself. Right. Right. I mean, you are associated with both, and then you end up being at the center of things. You know both the thought process, and if there is something uh, that can keep farmers on the on the streets for one year, I think they they would have a legitimate story to tell as well. Mm-hmm. So once you start to appreciate those kind of thought process and see the related work that Navar does in this field. I think it makes much more uh, easier to get associated with the group, and if you're there, then you're itself motivated. Very good. Very good. So coming coming from the corporate background, I do understand that uh, bare minimum I'll have to take a 50-60 percent cut for mm-hmm. my salary, and that that would entail a uh, mm-hmm. lot lot more than just the monetary things. I mean, you you leave a lot of your lifestyle behind, and you you'll be up for a different kind of a challenge altogether. But that's how life is. I mean. Uh, Just, just take it at one step at a time, and I think you'll find your way to it. That, that's been my thought process while I wait for this. Exam. Good, good. So I think the younger aspirants looking over into this video, this is a very important message what Unita has given. If your intent is clear, if your thought process is clear, what you want to be, right? It helps. All the things will be in your favor. Because a movie I think Shahrukh Khan ke pune, jaa pe. There was a dialect that if you want something from inner heart of yourself, पूरी कायनात उसको आपके लिए लाने के लिए ठीक है एक जगह हो जाती है, right? So that is the thing. If you want something from your inside, that yes, I want to do this. It is not that many people or or many aspirants are saying that I will be getting handsome salary. That's I want to. Uh, that's why I want to go to Nabad. So that is not there. What sparks? What ignites you to get into the organization? What is your thought process? What is your intent? and that actually helps you to get into where you want it may be that you will uh, qualify the phase 2 it may be that you will give good interview but even though you miss the final selection by one or two wish but if you want it really my dear friends your intent is clear definitely the whole universe will try to get you get you into that system so that is very important message given by mr punit now coming on to the punit the phases of examination that's that's what the new aspirants should be uh, more keen to know since the pattern has changed drastically last year and from last year in phase 1 if you talk about the qre that is quant reasoning and english uh, this section has become qualifying and it was uh, earlier thought that only engineers will be able to pass this phase 1 examination due to quant and reasoning but i think after the change of pattern everyone stands in equal platform so what's your take on this for phase 1 of nabar how the aspirant should prepare for the phase 1 your strategy correct so uh, i think qre has is been made uh, just a quali- qualifying section from this exam i mean from this year last year they, they, it was counted for the final merit i think that's a brilliant thing to do because a uh, lot of exams if you see around i mean a lot of exams are structured in a way which gives undue advantage to maybe engineers as you would call it or somebody who's had a math background right so i think this this is a good thing to do and this is how selection processes evolve over time and i still feel now if you compare it with the selection process outside in the industry the best of best selection processes i think this is very, still very conventional to say 
I mean, you, you're judging people on uh, one, one maybe quantitative abilities or maybe one exam, which is one hour. And then there, are, there are a lot more things that you actually do while you end up being in the job. So I think if you were to assess those uh, abilities or those functional abilities, I think the process will require entire revamp. But I think this is a good start to, to remove quantitative reasoning and English just out of the equation so that people from any background can just make it right. Uh, on that note, what I feel is uh, once this undue advantage is done, nobody should be put up now at least mm -hmm. that uh, maybe QRE will jeopardize my chances of selection. No, it's right. not that. Now everybody has a fair chance at selection right. and ESI and ARD becomes the mainstay. Mm -hmm. When I say ESI, and, uh, ESI is very conventional still because no, even if you ask questions in ESI, they're like, uh, what is the growth export, growth in export? Like they'll, they'll, like, they'll ask you exact percentages. That, that might not be so relevant, but mm -hmm. you end up mugging it for the exam mm -hmm. and you'll have to do it. There's, there's no second thought about it. Or there's no way around. I mean, you'll have to still mug up what is the GDP figure, uh, which organization has projected how much GDP growth for India. I think these con these questions will continue to come unless we reach that next stage where the process evolves a bit more and they are not asking you these questions. Mm -hmm. But again, having said that, ESI, ARD still is the mainstay. And with ESI, I feel one source, just stick to one source and it might be any source mm -hmm. and just mug it up. I think that that's the only way. Um, uh, even if you're not remembering something at the first instance, maybe you take 30% of it, you do it second time, you take 60% of it. And even if at 70%, I think you're good to go because how questions appear is uh, they'll ask you a figure and those figures might not be so close. There, there are figures which are so close. And then you might just leave that exam any which way is you no know, if you're 60 65 percent in the exam you end up qualifying it so it's not that you are allowed to score 100 there in, at least in the prelims right mm -hmm. you don't have to score 100 so even if you're remembering maybe 60 65 percent of it and then that uh, photographic memory in your mind just clicks up and uh, whenever you see a question right. you uh, you realize that i mean this is one option i've read somewhere mm -hmm. or this, this is one figure i remember at back of my mind and then you end up doing those questions correct and again, ha have that in mind that you only need 65, maybe out of 100 mm -hmm. in ESI and ARD to qualify or to make it to the mains. Right. Now coming to the mains, I think uh, that that's that's a beautiful change that has been done. You know, giving more weightage to the subjective part. Mm -hmm. And this is where your core understanding of the subject is required. I think uh, people who still mug up or maybe remember more figures than anybody else, they had a fair chance till last time. But mm -hmm. uh, 50 marks in subjective this year, I think it it is kind of neutralized a lot of things and made made it an even what do you say even platform for everybody who kind of maybe tries to aspire for this exam or tries to clear it. So I think uh, that, that that's a fair fair bit of uh, evenness that has been introduced in the process. There is a lot more to come, but I think this this is a good start. Mm -hmm. So Unit, what happens is that uh, I was talking to one of the student uh, yesterday only. He belongs to Northeast. And he was quite afraid. He was saying that, sir, due to this descriptive format, we from the remote location, many students say that we are not able to uh, type write well answers or type well. So what message would you like to give to such students who are not tech savvy or who are afraid of typing and writing? So there, there's two set of people here. One who are not tech savvy or maybe they're not too fast at typing. Now for those set of people, I think the only way out is this either the exam shifts to an entire pen and paper board, which is not likely in the near future. Mm. So I think they'll have to get hands on with the, with the typing speed. And even no, I, I usually type and that's the kind of work we do in the organization. So that has not been a problem for me, at least in this part. But I think still the keyboards uh, that are available in the exam, hall, they're not the same mm. keyboards like we use them on our laptops. Mm -hmm. So still we do have our set of challenges. But for people who are not tech savvy, I think uh, first thing they should start doing is uh, maybe writing more on laptop or maybe just buy a keyboard and start typing. Because to type 2000 words in one, one and a half hour, I think your speed has to be decent. I, I first thought that 2000 words in one and a half hour is too much to type. But then when I sat in the exam, I realized that uh, maybe I still have 20 minutes to spare while I've done my entire thing. Mm -hmm. So it's just not too difficult once you start typing. Uh, this is for those set of people who don't type. And mm. then there are other set of people who say I can type, but I can't frame my answer. So right, that, that is right. a different set of people, mm. right? 
I think for them, it's important that you read editorials. Uh, what I've seen people doing in this, this space is they rely too much on summaries. Economic hmm. survey, get a summary. Or maybe any 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 other topic, just get a summary. Or get a summary of a report. I think first thing to do is, if you're reading any report, even if you read the executive summary right. of the report itself, what people do is, executive summary, ka bhi they will read summary. Hmm, hmm, I think this is where you're digging your own grave. Uh, hmm. You, you need to be very thorough with any report you read, uh, any report that comes from outside, at least from the agriculture side, because this is where the exam is focused on. Hmm. So don't focus too much on summaries. I think economic survey, even if you are reading the summary of the entire survey, but at least read the chapters on agriculture, social hmm. impact, uh, development, macro situation. I think the, these are these are those chapters which you should not skip. Of course, mm-hmm. you can rely on summary. Summaries don't give you the better idea. And then what people end up doing is they do not read editorials. Mm-hmm. If I was to be very specific about Nabat, I think you cannot afford to skip Professor Gulati's article. Mm-hmm. Right. So very article. Yes. Yeah. I'm, uh, and Professor Gulati has been working with uh, Nabat for quite some time now. Mm-hmm. And he's an authority in agriculture economics. So you can't right. afford to skip his. You just, just subscribe to him on uh, Indian Express maybe. Mm. And he continues to write articles. And you'll find maybe two, three articles from him every week. Right. And 99% of the time, it will make sense. Hmm. Right. Uh, you would not toe the line every time what Professor Bulati says. But I think these are good good points to start with. And people should right. not skip editorial. And once right. you start to do that, you, you'll realize that you have a hold on a lot of things which are economics. I mean, which is agricultural economics or maybe mm-hmm. development economics. You, you get a hang of those ideas. And if I was to specifically say there are... 10 or 12 themes that the entire agriculture sector or NABAD in particular will focus on in, in, in right. the subjective questions. Right. right. There, they might be, say, something like MSP. It was mm. a question this time around. It right. was in debate for mm. uh, one, one and a half year. And mm. the entire economics around it, when it started. So while mm. you read MSP, I think uh, what people end up doing is reading MSP in the context of things that's happening in the last two to three years. Right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Farmer protest. Uh, what is the actual figure? And these questions are asked in prelims. So people are not wrong doing it. Right? Mm. But how the examination has changed is now they're asking you to do an analysis of MSP yes. uh, from the start. Yes. So it's, it's, I mean, these are your themes. These themes you should pick up and then start reading about them uh, from the past. I mean, take say MSP when, when it actually started uh, during the Green Revolution. What was the backdrop in which MSP actually came? And that was need of the hour at that point in time. It might be good economics back then, but it definitely is not a good economics now. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe to continue to. And there are people who will make sense as well. They will say MSP for 22, 23 crops. Mm-hmm. I think that would entail a cost of 8 to 9%. And that's never sustainable. Right. right. And these, these are the things Professor Gulati will keep telling you again and again mm-hmm. in those articles. Right. So to develop that mindset, I think you should not skip editorials. Right. And then pick those themes. And I'll name few themes and people can be smart enough to pick other themes as well. Uh, this is something that I've realized. Maybe farm income, how to double mm. it. Mm. Right. That's been common priority. Then mm. MSP. What mm. is farmer debt situation? Now, right. uh, what is farm holding situation? Right. What is farm mechanization? And what are we doing around that? Right. And all these things are talked about at length, everywhere. I mean, in all the government forums, at least uh, those which are related to agriculture. Mm-hmm. These things are always talked about. But then if you start to read about farm mechanization, you see, I mean, where is it started? Where is it now? And where will mm. we end up if we end right. up mechanizing everything? Mm. Right. So these things, these are 10, 12 broad themes. Just pick these themes, uh, make your notes of two to three pages each so mm. that you have further to write. Right. right. These exams expect you to write maybe 600 words, right? That's the mm-hmm. max they expect you to write. Right. You have 300 quality words and then you can build around that. Right. So right, that you right. make a really good answer. One more thing, Ponet, is that uh, many of the students who are not from the biology background or agriculture background, uh, there is a hysteria of called static agriculture. Everyone is afraid that what they will ask static agriculture. I, have, I am not well aware with that. I cannot remember static agriculture. So I think you are the best person being from engineering background. Uh, what message would you like to give to them about the static agriculture hysteria, fear, afraid? I think static has lost its relevance. I mean, right. if, if you, I mean, the entire static. I'm not talking about ARD static, maybe ESI static as well. Mm-hmm. 
yes. it has lost its relevance right while i say it has lost its relevance because it was never relevant too much in the first part i mean you'll get four or five questions here and there from agriculture hmm. these are questions like say xyz disease is associated hmm. with which crop you hmm. might i mean there are hundred of diseases right i mean right. if you end up marking all of it then you'll only do that hmm. and you'll you'll miss the main part right, right. so i think uh, more from a static front front i think uh, it's not that relevant today i mean you need you need not end up mugging every disease that every crop faces maybe some disease which are on top like uh, say last to last year if you were appearing for an exam there was this uh, whole uh, the the crops which are affected in rajasthan region so right. there is a particular disease hmm. and that was in news and that's why it was asked hmm. right so all these diseases i mean it's not that they will pick a disease which has happened in india in 1960 and they'll ask you now no they're not doing that definitely they they're only asking you diseases which which have impacted farmers in last one or two years right mm, mm. and they will always be on top of your mind if you're reading news right. so i think ard stick uh, not to focus too much on i mean of course nabard keeps asking you questions around uh, which breed of cattle or which mm, breed mm, of cow which breed of buffalo some fixed areas think, are there right some fixed areas yeah. so correct and th- this is something you can always remember because see buffaloes at max indian breed plus foreign breed and same goes for cows as well there are not more than 20 right right and you can always remember and same goes for cattle same goes for uh, maybe backyard poultry so all all these uh, i think breeds is something you can always remember which part of the country they belong to then remember the larger geographical re- regions i mean this region is famous for this crop this region mm. is famous for this crop and then when you start to read these reports where say say xyz state has topped in this crop right or say a different state has crop uh, maybe topped in a fruit category so all these things nabard will continue to ask but they are not so important i would say i think right. prelims is just about clearing it mm-hmm. and you can clear it with smart strategy where you focus uh, largely on maybe 3 4 5 or max 6 months of current affairs right. but then doing it thoroughly revising right. it a lot of time Mm. and even if you skip static and more mm. so ard static i think that's the best decision to do because ard static any which will will have around what 10 to 15 marks of your entire uh, right paper right. you can still skip it and make it to the list mm mm-hmm. so more more on uh, maybe the dynamic portion which happens around you in last uh, one year or so i think that's more important okay last question uh, to you panit from my side any three mistakes would you like to uh, give to the that uh, upcoming aspirants that they should not repeat the mistakes what you have came across in your preparation time so i think like one i already mentioned is uh, not relying too much on summaries hmm. uh, maybe whenever you re- reading economics sir you can always come back to summaries but at least have a one cursory reading of of the entire text hmm. because then that will give you a broader idea because summary the the you no know, understand from say if i was to make summary i will make it up for 30 pages so that every it's readable and it will sell like something right mm. if, if if a summary itself is 100 page nobody will read it right my summary has to be 40 pages to mm. do maybe let somebody read it right mm. if i'm doing everything 400 500 pages of text i'm concising it to a size of 40 pages i think i'm missing a lot of it mm. you can always rely and come back to it for the revision part but at least have one reading of the entire text Mm-hmm. and this text goes for maybe nabard report you you can skip the part which is not relevant right right I mean, going too much into figures i think that never helps right right but just, just the idea what i mean and nabard report will give you one idea where nabard is focusing on and that goes for any any report right any organization that will have its annual report will entail that uh, what what next what next for them what has been good for them in the past i think these are few things that we need to focus on nabard report but at least reading the report and not mm-hmm. relying too much on summary you can rely on summaries for the uh, revision part but mm-hmm. not not for the first time that you do it right? second is not reading editorials and uh, i think uh, skipping professor gulati's editorial is criminal while you are preparing for nabard's exam definitely right so professor gulati just make a note of it i mean you need to read every article that professor gulati writes mm-hmm. and also taking interview lightly because uh, right. people just end up uh, appearing for the interview without giving any mocks and i think uh, for most part of my career in 4 mm. 5 years in hr i've been on the other side of the table i've been taking right. interviews right mm. but still uh, i cannot stress it much it has mm. to be there i mean you at least need to give three or four uh, mock interviews before you appear and that's why i disturb you the last day 
that I haven't got time to maybe appear for any mocks, uh, and you've been really, really helpful to take that mock one day before the exam, and that has helped. So even if it does nothing, but it gets you in that frame of mind. Right, right. Say, these are the these are the type of questions that might be asked. They'll catch you unaware. Right. And it's better if you're caught unaware before the exam instead of you no know, being caught unaware in the interview. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. An interview you can't miss because last time I, I scored 25 on 25 in interview right. and this time it's a, I'm expecting good marks in interview but even if you miss it by a mark I mean 24 is still good I mean you tell anybody outside that mm. I scored 24 on 25 in interview and you'll say that's brilliant 96 mm. percent is a brilliant score mm. right but uh, it doesn't work that way in Nabad. I mean, you'll have to be on top of everything. Right, right, right. Because it's it's such a competitive space. Last year I missed it by two marks. I was nowhere in the list. Mm -hmm, People mm -hmm. who would have just missed it by 0 0.25 or 0 yes. 0.5 marks. Yes. But in inter uh, there was the waiting list, and only two or three of them could actually make it to the final list. So mm -hmm. you can see how competitive it gets at the top. So you can't take it lightly. So the, these are three three suggestions I would give to preparing. Okay, so two important takeaways, friends, what you can take from Puneet's session is that have a broader perspective of everything. Don't go for the summary and the shortcuts. Try to have a broader perspective of everything. And second important thing he has said is that don't fluctuate in between the sources that I'm reading this today, I'm reading that today. Whatever you read, read number of times. Because it has been rightly said by Bruce Lee also that I have not afraid of that person who has practiced thousand kicks, thousand number of times but i am afraid of that person who has practiced one kick thousand number of times right Puneet? correct I mean, that, that's so true i mean if you keep juggling between resources i think you'll be lost right there are so so many resources available right. i think you'll be lost in that sea so mm -hmm. just stick to one and stick to it very firmly firmly right so thank you Puneet, for sparing your valuable time with all of us and best of luck for your future endeavors Thank you so much, sir. And uh, I owe a lot to you. I mean, you've been really gracious. You've been very helpful. And uh, thank you. I think I owe a lot of it to you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so Puneet, for, for your gesture. Hope you will be also helping somewhat for the aspirants in the future also. Thank you. Thank you, Puneet. I hope it does. Thank you so much. Sir.